My talk is going to be on continuous curvilinear capsule or excess, uh, something that most beginners find most difficult to perform or get it right to start with. It can be pretty simple if you employ certain basic principles and certain aids. As the name implies, it has to be continuous, it should be circular and ideally situated centrally and it should be of the appropriate size. It should ideally be about 0.5 millimeters smaller than the optic of the eye hole that you are putting into the eye. How does it help you? It keeps the nucleus inside the bag when you are operating, it does not let the opening extend and does not let the nucleus drop back into the vitreous or come up into the anterior chamber in which case you could have endo endothelial cell damage. So having a good rexus makes your surgery much more safe and predictable. Postoperatively, it keeps the lens in place, keeps the lens centered. To some extent, if it has been properly sized, it would prevent PCO, PCO and also will ensure refractive stability by preventing the lens from moving forward or backwards. What are the forerunners before we got to continuous carbonate capsule or excess? You used to make a simple scratch. So Christmas tree, you start at the lower end and pull up, it tears like a V and then go ahead, get the nucleus out. And there are people who used to do FACO with a Christmas tree incision or with a can opener. That's how it started. And there was another technique in between called the envelope technique. Somewhere in the uh, upper one third of the lens, you make a horizontal cut and you can't do FACO under that. And through that, the nucleus is taken out in ECC, the envelope stays there, the lens is put into the bag, then with a the scissor you cut and tear out the capsule so you get the lens in the bag those days. These were the forerunners before we got to actual continuous curvilinear capsule or excess. What do you need first? You need a reasonably good viscoelastic. Definitely in most cases, HPMC is good enough. You need to get the chamber deep. It doesn't mean you can't do it in a shallow chamber. In a shallow chamber, put in enough viscoelastic to push it down. If the chamber doesn't deepen, if you think it will not deepen, do put in mannitol intravenous before the surgery. Flatten the anterior capsule or at least reduce its convexity. The rexis will always run downhill. So if you have a very convex capsule, it will run out. So you want the capsule to be as flat as possible. If it is possible, you get it concave. Yes, you can do it under some conditions. If the intralenticular pressure is very high, decompress it. I'll show you one of the videos how to decompress it surgically. Yes, if you have a lens that is liquefied and very hypermature, you could give the patient IV mannitol on the table or just before. It would shrink a little bit, not very much, but it will make your surgery that much easier. Do not let the AC shallow during the process. As you're doing the rexus, if the lens comes up, the rexus will run out. So it has to stay down. So it will be much better for a beginner or even an advanced surgeon to do the rexus through a side port. You have multiple choices. You can do the main port or the side incision. The main port will leak unless you're really experienced or you have an excellent viscoelastic. You can use a needle, you can use a forceps or a micro rexus forceps. That is a choice that you make with experience. I prefer the needle. So all my videos will be with a needle. What do you do? Fill viscoelastic in the anterior chamber, overfill. I do a needle a capsular tome through a side port. So you can cut anyway, down, up or sideways. I prefer going that way. Turn the flap down and put it flat. That's most important. Flatten the flap. Don't let the flap stand up. Don't let the flap bunch up. Keep it absolutely flat. And like walking a dog on a leash, you hold it, it's going to go in one circle. So take it along that circle. Of course, if you have good red reflex, it makes it easier. Again, even to the end, try not to let it bunch up. The tearing edge should be seen very well. Don't let the tearing edge bunch up. And there you have a very predictable, so linear cut from center, the cut can travel downwards, upwards, to the right or left, that's a personal choice that you make. Turn the capsular flap over, flatten it, turn it round, go circular, don't let it bunch up. If you're doing it through the side port, the chances that the viscoelastic will leak out is much lesser than if you do it through the main port. With experience, yes, you can learn to do the main port. If you use a rexus forceps, it's a larger instrument, you have to go through the main port, the chances of you making the chamber shallow as you proceed is higher. Micro-rexis faucets are available that can go through a one millimeter side port. 
try using them they are also very good one more similar video with higher mac sorry with higher mac it would sometimes go triangular take one arm of the triangle turn it over flatten that's the first thing if you don't flatten here everything is lost get it flat and start to move around steady the globe with the second instrument through the second side port and there you have it again it's very predictable if you follow the simple rules keep the chamber deep don't let viscoelastic come out stabilize the eye flatten the capsule turn it around start with the chamber being a little overfilled you always come across the situation when you have increased intralenticular pressure hypermature cataract liquefied cortex semi liquefied cortex the moment you touch you go to argentinal flag sign so how do you avoid that where you start make a small nick it starts to leak out stop put in your hydrodilation cannula and aspirate the cortex and go into that small little nick you made and decompress by pressing down and aspirating from inside the capsular bag then refill the uh, anterior chamber once more then you start again you have reasonably good control the intralenticular pressure has been brought down and you'll have to decompress by pressing on the nucleus once aspirate tap on the nucleus come back and then you get good control and you will get a good access here so here the trick is to decompress the intralenticular pressure and make sure that the pressure gradient is not too different what else can you do if you have access to high molecular weight viscoelastic like helon 5 it works like magic put in viscoelastic normal viscoelastic hpmc under the hpmc put in helon 5 this would go and flatten the capsule and will counteract and give a tamponade for the positive intralenticular pressure and will make your job much easier it will actually flatten it and even make the central 5 mm if you plan it well a little concave here you see this is hpmc that's been filled up deepened under that is helon 5 if you look carefully you'll find that the capsule is flattening it's like pouring concrete on the capsular bag this can occur only with helon 5 and no other viscoelastic don't try it with anything else unfortunately i got quite a bit of uh, air bubble so i go back and aspirate that out you can see that flattening that is brilliant flattening that you will get and absolute control so intralenticular pressure though it's high it's tamponaded by the helon 5 cost about 2000 odd rupees worth spending that if you are in a difficult situation you don't want to get into trouble just one more video so you've done everything right but you ended up with a very small rexus that occurs in this difficult situations so you want to leave it that way or you want to enlarge it it can also be enlarged all you need to put hpmc take a vanas make a cut anywhere which is convenient for you micro vanas available that go to the side port here you need to use a capsular rexus forceps you can enlarge this meticulously to the size that you want and once you get under the main incision if difficult to manipulate or hold get hold of a micro rexus forceps through the side port so the right instrumentation and the right principles you apply you can design a good capsular rexus under any given situation so summary flatten anterior capsule deepen chamber maintain the deep chamber central rexus keep it circular handle intralenticular pressure appropriately thank you